Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey wife, did you know that Anchor is sponsoring our show? Really? Don't we use Anchor to distribute our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? Yeah, and we are on just about every other platform available as well, thanks to them. Why do we use Anchor as our podcasting service? Well, they make editing and distributing our show a breeze. What if one of our listeners wants to start their own podcast? Then they should head over to anchor.fm or download the app to get started. Awesome! You guys should go do that right now! Husband? Wife! Do you remember what happened yesterday? Not a fucking clue. You were sick. By yesterday, I mean Friday. By Friday, yeah. (laughs) So then I lost track of everything that we discussed. Right. So you're going to have to remind me here. Okay, so Naaman had leprosy. Okay. And he went to Elisha, and Elisha was like, bathe seven times. And Naaman was like, nah. That sounds stupid. Right. And then Elisha was like, whatever. But then his guys were like, dude. You just got to bathe. Why don't just you give do it a it. shot, just man? Just fucking do it. It's not that hard. Just right. try. So then he went back. And he did it. And he did it. And it helped. And his leprosy disappeared. And he was like, I'll pay you all the things. Yeah. And Elisha was like, nah, nah. it's all good. But then, then Elisha's his servant. Elbow. Yeah, his start with a G, I think. Gehazi. Yeah, there you go. Was like, I'll take it. Yeah. And then he took it and buried and it because yeah. he was like, he knew he'd done wrong. Right. But Elisha was like God and was like, so... <laughs> What you doing? Right. And Gehazi was like, nothing. Yeah. And Elisha was like, you fucking thief. And he was like, you are going to get leprosy now. And all and of all your, your descendants. descendants are going to have it too. Right. Ha ha. Fuck you and die forever. Leprosy. No, 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 Right. And that's what happened. Yep. Sure is. Yeah. All right. So that was first king. No. Second, Second kings, kings. Chapter five. It sure fuck was. And today we are doing... Second Kings chapter 6. All right, let's do this. Okay. Hey, wife, do you like coffee in the morning? I sure do, husband. Morning, noon, night, which reminds me, I need to add that to our grocery list because we're running low. Wait, before you do that, check out the website ungodlybrew.com where you can purchase a pound of your favorite flavor of coffee. What if I want more than one pound? Either order a larger amount or better yet, get 10% off by setting up a subscription for every two weeks or a month or whatever works for you. Did you set up something special for our listeners? You know I did. Exclusive for our listeners, get an additional 10% off subscriptions by entering the code SACRILEGIOUSCOFFEE at checkout. That's a hellishly good deal. Ungodly Brew is hellishly good coffee. Okay, Second Kings, chapter 6. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do it. One day. One day. <laughs> they love that line. The group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, as you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Yeah, we need a bigger place. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. Yeah, besides it cures leprosy, I hear. It does, right? right? There we can build a new place for us to meet. Yeah. I. he told them, go ahead. Um, please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. Okay. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the fucking river. Oh, shit. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Fuck me. (laughs) Where did it fall, the man of God asked. Is he going to part the fucking waters to get a wax out? A wax? An axe. An axe. (laughs) I'm going to be really angry if they part the fucking waters to get a goddamn axe head out. <laughs> when he showed him the place. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface. What the fuck is that shit? Grab it, Elisha said, and the man reached out and grabbed it. <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> That's so okay, stupid. well, it didn't part. But... but it's so stupid. Yeah, it is dumb. That's a miracle. <laughs> right. <laughs> the floating axe head. What a miracle. <laughs> okay, ready? Yes. Next section. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he mm -hmm. would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. Is that what it says, it's, such and such a place? It says, at such and such a place. Oh, okay. That's in quotes, too. That's what he would say. <laughs> but immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go to that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. Yeah. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this. Yeah. He called his officers together and demanded, which of you is the traitor? I Who? mean, that's most likely what's going on here. Yeah. Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? Mm -hmm. Not us, my lord, the king. One of the officers replied, Elijah, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. How do they know that? Because one of them's the spy. Right? <laughs> Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elijah is at Dotham. Okay. So I don't... Wait, what makes them... Why can't... If Elisha knows where... What all the other fucking words are that he says, right? why is he not going to know this? That's what I was wondering. Like, he, he could see the future. It, does it mean except for the future of himself? Right. So, one night, the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. Mm -hmm. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, man. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried I to Elisha. I mean, Elisha. if only he could just see right? what this guy says. Exactly. You know? Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Mm. Doesn't look like that to me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> then Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Oh, wow. Da, na, na, magical na, na, fucking army. Na, 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 na. It's a goddamn magical army. Na, 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 Some bullshit. Na. Isn't that the song, The Chariots of Fire? N what? Na, I don't na, fucking... Na, is there a song called Chariots of Fire? Na, 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 okay. Na, 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 no. You never heard it? Yeah, I've heard the song. Isn't that Chariots Isn't of that Fire? Isn't that the the Olympic song or something? No. No? No. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's the Chariots of Fire. I don't know. Well, there's a movie called The Chariots of Fire. Okay. But I don't know if it came from this or not. I have no idea. I'm really curious now what I was singing. Yeah, I'm curious too. <laughs> As the Aramean army advanced toward him, Elijah prayed, Oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. <laughs> if you were going to ask God anything, wouldn't you just be like, um, can you make them not be against me? Can right, you make them, yeah. I don't know, go away? Yeah. Like, not dead necessarily, but like go away. Maybe for their own sake, make them make them understand the um like what God wants them to do, and yeah, then like give, then they all get to soften live. their hearts. Yeah, soften, soften their, their hearts. hearts. Yeah, yeah. Stop fucking hardening their hearts, yeah. asshole. Make them love you, right? And then they'll go away. Yeah. Then Elijah went out and told them, "You have come the wrong way. This ain't the right city. <laughs> Follow me, and I'll take you to the man you're looking for." Well, it, oh come on, they're blind. God. He blinded them. Yeah, like okay, whatever. And he led like, them. Okay, if you if you have a fucking army and they're all blind, mm -hmm. every fucking one of them, don't you start questioning what you need to do? I think that by making them blind, they weren't like unable to see. Mm -hmm. They were blind to the truth. They were okay. unable to see the accuracy of where they were at. Okay. And he led them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elijah prayed, "Oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see." So the Lord opened their eyes, and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. Mm. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elijah, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Of course not, Elijah replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home again to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and then sent them home to their master. Wait, they just treated a whole fucking army and then sent them home? Yeah, sure. That's in, That's ridiculous. After that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. 
Okay. Was it ridiculous? It is ridiculous. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. Right. Like, this, it's just dumb. Like, <laughs> this, the whole thing is dumb. You're so offended. <laughs> well, I mean, a whole fucking army walks into a town, and then the king's like, I guess we won't kill him. We'll just feed him, and then we'll send him home. I mean... Okay, but he the king is asking Elijah, who is a prophet. Yeah, but I'd take one look at Elijah and I'd be like, dude, their whole army's here. Right, and they Elijah's could, They saying, can start fighting any time, but we're going to feed them instead? Yeah, because Elijah's like, why murder if you don't have to? If I mean, you feed these guys, they're going to go home totally impressed. And that will, you know, spread the word of how guess, awesome we are. I guess. Sometime later, however, King Ben-Hadad of Aram mustered his entire army and besieged Samaria. Mm. As a result, there was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Dove poop. I know, but like, five, like what is those? I don't know what those prices mean. Well, the fact that dove poop sold for anything right. means a lot right. to me. That is a price in and of itself. True. One day as the king of Israel was walking along the wall of the city, a woman called to him, Please help me, my lord the king. He answered, If the lord doesn't help you, what can I do? I have neither food from the threshing floor nor wine from the press to give you. Yeah, but you told all the other people that they have, like, endless fucking oils and foods and shit. And Maybe he's tired. Uh, he's resurrected people. He's like, I'm tired. I don't give a fuck. Stop asking me for help, everybody. That's no, what he's like. No, you can resurrect people. You can give food to this person. That's the way I see it. But then the king asked, what's the matter? She replied, this woman said to me, come on, let's eat your son today. Then we will eat what? my son tomorrow. So we cooked my son and ate him. Then the next day I said to her, kill your son so we can eat him. But she has hidden her son. Wait, what? They're starving. So they were going to, what? Don't you always <gasps> kill your kids when you're starving? No. <laughs> that never happened. When the king heard this, he tore his clothes in despair. Mm. And as the king walked along the wall, the people could see that he was wearing burlap under his robe next to his skin. Oh, that means he's, you know. He's real upset. Yeah. May God strike me and even kill me if I don't separate Elijah's head from his shoulders this very day. Why are we killing Elijah? I don't know. I don't get it. Why is he mad at Elijah? I don't know. The king vowed. Elijah was sitting in his house with the elders of Israel when the king sent a messenger to summon him. But before the messenger arrived, Elijah said to the elders, A murderer has sent a man to cut off my head. When he arrives, shut the door and keep him out. We will soon hear his master's step following him. Mm, okay. While Elijah was still saying this, the messenger arrived. And the king said, all this misery is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? The end. <laughs> <laughs> Did you follow any of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know why he's mad at Elisha all of a sudden, except for that maybe either. Elisha didn't make him kill that army or something. I don't have any I, idea. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I don't either. Well, I mean, I guess he's blaming Elisha because there's famine, and, okay. well, why can't Elisha fix it or tell him how to fix it? Because he's a prophet, so. But he didn't ask Elisha. Yeah, no, I know. But, like, but I mean, he should just offer, right? I, People are eating their fucking children and sons and stuff. I mean, but she said it so see, nonchalant. If, if he's, I know, right? If he's, but if you see people eating their sons, you should probably offer help and figure out what's going on. He's like, I ain't got time for this, right? Yeah, that he. That's why he didn't answer her because he knew, he knew what she was going to ask, and he was mm -hmm. like, No, I'm not getting into that. Right, right. You had zero problem cutting up your son for dinner. Yeah, that's fucked up. He's like, I'm not even touching that with a pole. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the king is like, God damn it, Elisha, get over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was uh, Second Kings chapter six. Sure as fuck was. And tomorrow we'll be back with Second Kings chapter seven. All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye. Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore d. For d's nuts. Oh my. God, stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. 
Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.